Well, hello, Willeen. Thank you for joining our podcast. Thanks, Henry. It's good to be here. Entrepreneurs, business, and finance. And you are an entrepreneur in, in business and deal with finance. So you're a very interesting person and a friend, and I'm very glad to have you on the show. So a little introduction, Wileen has a company, WCD Speakers, and I met her through mutual friends when I was looking to get uh, development advice, counseling, consulting input when I began speaking, and she helped me with all that, and she helps me uh, bounce ideas off to this day, even though I'm not doing much speaking, and she has a very interesting business for many reasons, but one of them is just think about all the people that she gets to interact with from all walks of life that are experts in their platform that go out and educate people on something. What a what a fun, interesting, not without challenges, but um, entrepreneurial venture. Would you like to share, Wileen, perhaps to start how you started that business originally? Because a lot of people want to go start their own business and people that have want to hear how other, how other people did it. It's a really fun story for me. I was in a 22 litigation support career that I was ready to leave. And I was in my car one day going to another luncheon and I just said out loud, I want a job I can do from anywhere and not sit in traffic. I had no idea people got paid to speak. Um, So I ended up in a organization that did staffing and it gave me the outline for the business that I wanted to open uh, standardly. Bureaus do something one way, agencies do it another way. The agency model for me is I go and get a speaker that I really like and want to put them in front of certain audiences. So it moved me into the development area. Um, And what was great is my manager of that business gave me a book by a speaker, Dana Steele. And that was, I called her, I read her book, I called her. And then a year later, I had the business I could do from anywhere and not sit in traffic. It was amazing. I, I love the unfoldment when we state the things that we want. So that's how I ended up in this business. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Well, you're well thought of. And as I said, I was referred to you. Um, and there is so much involved with being a speaker because many times people that want to become a speaker uh, aren't aware that it's really running your own business. Um, There's marketing, there's contracts, there's payroll, which may just be your own personal payroll, but paying yourself, maybe you need some help. There's website development, there's email marketing. And I know you're also a publisher, so there's helping people publish their books, which frequently comes along with speaking. So that is something that without the advice of someone that's been through it, is a is a harder learning curve and uh, i know you provide that good value to so many people would you like to talk about that a little bit i mean i'll summarize it as well as you can (laughs) so consulting we do a lot of consulting on speaker development i think you know there's a couple of models in this business and that is um the coaching model consulting model as a as a speaker you want to do more consulting in-house and that website and and those credentials those things look completely different the materials that you would provide in marketing versus somebody who wants to be a keynote speaker so henry you and i were working on the keynote perspective put you in front of an audience to get great video and start working on your platform from that perspective. I know we didn't get to work on your book with you, but you were working on a book at the time. And now we have a writing course that helps people who, who's authors who want to, or speakers who want to be authors um, and have that book to take to audiences with them, which is another source of income. We take them through that entire process all the way to publishing to Amazon, to be an Amazon bestseller. And that's been a really fun process for me, especially writing with someone who just can't quite get, you know, what's my outline? What's my chapter structure? So we're doing a lot of that too. And then on the speaker development side, really working with them to hone their messaging and be a message currently in this marketplace that people, uh, that's in demand, that people really want to hear and that they will hire for. And like you said, setting up your business as a speaker is so important. A lot of us from from that, if you are a speaker, you are an entrepreneur 
And especially if you're on the consultant side and making sure your business is set up and structured well to support you um, going forward, paying yourself a salary, taking care of your business, because this is the speaking business. It's very interesting because the speaking business means own your own business. Uh, like you say, people don't often think about that. Definitely an entrepreneur. Uh, and there's so many ways to approach it. Like you said, I, uh, for I did some keynote speaking in front of a, a generally a larger audience, but many people do speaking at companies for small breakout groups. They have online speaking, they do training, they do consulting, and then maybe they do a speech here and there. And it all depends on the interest, but why don't you speak to the varieties? Cause there's so many different things, you know, people think of, Oh, well, going to be this, like we know some people that, you know, speak to Microsoft, um, big meetings of, you know, thousands of people. And there are some of those, but those are, um, the, typically, I don't want to count anything out, but those are typically the harder ones to get, um, at least initially. But there's so many other ways to uh, contribute and share expertise in the speaking world. Sure. sure. And I think having a book too helps support your, you as an expert. So you can do more of the consulting inside of a company, uh, smaller groups, more expert type uh, knowledge where you're doing recruiting or stress management or how to be a better leader in your business uh, team building we do we work with um consultants and trainers who do speaking in that vein as well as there's virtual and then there's some people like the big mel robbins and tony robbins and um people who sell tickets and have big events we we don't work with those people. <laughs> we may go to their events, but um, essentially we work more with the budding speaker, the one who wants to dip their toe in the speaking industry, start to develop themselves as those type of speakers. We certainly know how to get you there. Um, we don't work in that arena, meaning setting up that production and that type of thing. We do we do events, though. We have an event coming up this year called Becoming Bureau Ready, which is if you've been speaking and want to increase your fees um, and have more exposure, more visibility, get more engagements, we're inviting you to do a program with us that at the end of the year, we will put you on a large stage with a, it's a sponsored event, and we will um, get recording, actually video of the event, a two camera shoot so that you have video to start this, this journey of becoming a bureau ready speaker, being one that is a keynote on larger stages. Um, and so that's exciting. And I can, I can uh, speak from experience that when I got asked to speak originally and uh, some long 45 minute speech, it just seemed like eons at the time. And it really did help to have experts that I could go to and say, okay, where do I start? People thought I was an expert, but translating that into speaking on a stage and translating that into, uh, you know, travel and just all the things that um, you can help people with from your website to your branding, to your message and boiling it down. Um, why, uh, why reinvent the wheel? When you have a, an expert that can help you with it, that, that's that's what I see. And there well, is my not passion funny. too is just to work with people to to achieve what they want to achieve. And the reason I'm still in this business after the pandemic because it was a rough couple of years. Um, I'm still here because you have a message. Um, you have a message, and people, if you are called to be a keynote speaker, I know you're being called by something greater than yourself to come out and, and tell people what it is you know and have an impact on the world. And we need that right now. I think the messaging, we, we need people that are saying what the truth is for them, it, whether it's from business and recruiting to motivation. Henry, you've learned a lot of stuff in your your life um, that can that you can share and really just help people. Same as Same for me in working with speakers and giving them my knowledge. Uh, the speakers have knowledge, and I love supporting people with a great message. There you do, and I, I believe that, and I've experienced that myself. When you go hear someone, 
and it makes a big impact on your life. And uh, that's very rewarding to experience that from the listening side and very rewarding to be able to deliver that. And for you to shepherd all these people is uh, just, a, just a neat thing. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to share personally. I, I happen to know that you were able to, you have a healthy mom who's uh, maybe young uh, in spirit, but not young in years. And you were able to take her to a, a trip abroad. And um, so life's not all about uh, the speaker bureau or the speaker agency, but. Um, um, yeah, we had a nice trip to France and Italy and. My sister owns a ministry in France and we're able to go see it's fun on Facebook. Like you and I have connected and stayed connected on Facebook and it's enjoyable when you actually know uh, what you're seeing. So my sister would post pictures of her, her garden and her backyard and it was just fun to go see it. So then when she posts these things, we're like, we were there. We, we saw yeah. that we sat on that bench, you know, we were on that patio and so that was a lot of fun. And plus, my mother had never been overseas. And to just do that trip with her, she's 85, um, was 85 this year. She'll be 86 uh, this year in 2024. And it was just great to spend that time with her. And, and of course, my sister and know where she's living now. And if you have a chance to travel, especially to Paris and see some of the I believe it's probably one of the seven wonders of the world, right? The Eiffel Tower. And that was a that was a fun trip. So thanks for asking about it. And I have five dogs and uh we they all we all work for you. So <laughs> we're all up in the office every day doing our to support um entrepreneurs and speakers around the world. We work with people here and in the UK and Europe and different places. Did I leave anything off that you would like to share? That uh, seems like you gave a pretty good summary, but obviously you've got. Well, I would like to share one one more thing. Yes. That I just launched my own book. Hey, there so you go. I just wrote a book and co-authored with Dr. Renee Ostertag. She's a PT in Colorado, and the fun thing was, you don't have to be here for us to work together, Dr. Uh, Renee. Dr. Ostertag and I actually did all of our writing on Zoom on a Google Doc and produced this book and it was published and she was here this weekend. We did a book signing and um, and met for the very first time. So don't leave yourself out. You can work with anyone. Of course, we know that now on Zoom, having the pandemic, everybody's pretty much gotten used to meeting on Zoom. And you can write, you can do your speaker speaker development, anything that you want to do. And uh, I'm an expert. I've done my own book now. So Getting My Happy Back is on Amazon and talks about how our mind and bodies um, talk to each other. So that's exciting. CDSpeakers.com. We'll have that at the bottom of the podcast. Anybody that wants to contact uh, Wileen. And uh, while I've got you on a recording here, we can't do a blood pack, but I can record that I got an offer for you to babysit our dog that we don't have yet when we go away. So now I've got you here. Your chance to deny it is right now. No, I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. I uh, want Olga to have a dog. So if she wants and y'all travel, I'm opening, I'm opening it up. Just not a really big one. Maybe something in the middle. Has limitations. Well, I'm obviously joking. We'll work that out if that makes sense. But that was a very nice offer. And uh, that's the type of person Wileen is in my experience. She will be a friend to you and she will be loyal, even offering to potentially babysit your dog. Now, I wouldn't advertise that because there's only so many dogs she can babysit, but that's just a sign of a, my mind, of a very, one of many signs of a very nice person. So I thought I'd throw that in at the end. Uh -huh. Thank you. I Yeah, I absolutely want to um, want to work with you and have a relationship because I think that's the most important thing. I want to work with people that I enjoy working with and then enjoy working with me because you get further that way. Congratulations on your book. I know you have new innovations and new things coming because the world and the speaking world and the marketing world is always changing. You were sharing some things that preview of what you're going to be doing. So I'm excited to see them as they come up. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. Thanks so much for being on this show on the podcast. Thanks for inviting me. It was good to see you and be with you.
Good to see you and be with you. And uh, we will talk soon. Have a good afternoon. Yeah, you too. Bye.